what is going on youtube hope you guys are all having a great day so far today we're here to talk about the montreal canadians and i needed to make an update on the Connor bedard situation i mean there's a lot of people who are pissed off right now because the montreal canadians won three straight games uh they're getting further and further away from Connor bedard from the bottom of the leaderboard yes uh they're getting further away from Connor bedard the more they win games um the the the, the tenor the chance are that they could draft Connor Bedar in June uh, this summer. So yeah, a lot of people got mad over this. I've seen a lot of comments on Twitter and I'm going to make an update talking about this because I don't think it's the end of the world. Yes, it sucks. Yes, it would have helped a lot to get Connor Bedard, but I'm going to give you guys my honest opinion on this. But before getting into that, I invite you guys to subscribe. We are closer and closer to 3K subscribers. I'm trying to get there before my birthday in April. So if you could help me out with that, that would be amazing. With all the trades that are coming with the Canadians, you want to be updated. And I'm going to make videos right away when a trade happens with the Montreal Canadiens. So if you want to be updated with that, subscribe and turn on post notifications as well as the like button. Let's try and get 100 likes on this video. So yeah, my, I might be controversial with what I'm about to say, but no, the Montreal Canadiens do not need Connor Bedard to win a Stanley Cup over the next couple of years. Yes, it would certainly help a lot. Yes, it would make the rebuild a lot faster because Connor Bedard will come in the NHL and have an impact right away. He's going to probably be close to a 100-point player, at least a point-per-game player in his first season in the National Hockey League. He's that generational talent, but... But it's not the end of the world if we don't get him either. Yes, the Canadians are probably not going to get him, but they're still going to get a pretty decent pick in uh, the next NHL 3 draft. And if they could end up with a Fantili, a Mishkov, a Benson, a, a Dvorsky, a Edward Sell, a, a, a Smith, and no matter who they get in those players, they're going to be having an elite player in the National Hockey League. And they have Slavkovsky as well, who's going to be elite. Suzuki, they have a lot of young guys. They have a young core. They have a lot of young prospects that are going to come in in the National Hockey League. They have a lot of draft picks. And they have a lot of trades to make. They could sign up some free agents as well. And yes, getting a generational talent will do a, a, a big favor to the Montreal Canadiens. It would help get the rebuild done faster. But if we end up not getting him, it's not that that does not mean that the Canadians are not going to be good. I've seen a lot of people on Twitter saying, ah, they're winning games, they're done. That means that means we're gonna be mid forever again. And no, that does not mean that we're going to be mid. Just look at a lot of teams that won Stanley Cups never got. A, a, a generational talent and uh sometimes you get those players you get those generational talents you get those franchise players in the later rounds later in the first round pick sometimes players are unexpected they become better than what they were supposed to be and the draft is not an exact science so there's a lot of other ways where the canadians could get that franchise players Maybe they already drafted him, but they have no idea how good he will develop. That's what's the most beautiful thing about hockey. Sometimes you get some unexpected players that become a lot better in that. that the best example that I've seen in the NHL right now uh, for that is the Boston Bruins. You look at the Boston Bruins, they've been one of the best teams for a decade, more than a decade. They won a Stanley Cup in 2011. Um, they, they, they went to the Stanley Cup Finals three times in, in, the, in the decade. Right now, they are one of the best teams in NHL history in regular season. They're one of the favorites to win the Stanley Cup. And when you look at their best players, they're not first overall picks. Look at Brad Marchand, a 100-point player multiple times in his career, more than a point per game. This year, he has 46 points in 45 games. 70, 71st overall in the 20... 20 uh, 26, 26, yeah. 2006 in each and three draft. Third round. Patrice Bergeron, same thing. One of the best defensive center to ever play in the National Hockey League. Second round, 45th overall. Oh, you say David Poster Posternock. Yes, David Posternock is absolutely amazing. He he's on pace for more than 50 goals this year. He could win the Rocket Richard. He has a shot at it. 74 points in 53 games. He will hit 100 points. Yes, he got drafted in the first round. 25th overall was not supposed to be that good. And when you look at Charlie McAvoy, one of the best defensemen in the National Hockey League, he is only 25 years old. 14th overall. 
So when you look at it, even David Krejci, uh, 2004 NHL 3 draft, second round, 63rd overall. He's been having a heck of a career. He needs close to a point per game this year. The two players that got drafted the highest on the Bruins roster right now is Taylor Hall, who got drafted first overall. But he's been far, far away from the best player and with the Bruins this season. Has 30 points in 53 games. Yes, he's decent, but... There's a lot of players that are doing a lot better right now for the Bruins. The guy that got drafted uh, the highest after Taylor Hall is Pavel Zaka, fifth overall in the 2015 NHL entry draft with the New Jersey Devils. And he's having the best season of his career right now with 36 points in 53 games. So I say all of that just to show you guys that there are some other ways to build a contending winning team. It's by drafting the right players and developing them properly. Yes, it's important to get some high picks, but what's more important is to develop the players right. And if the Canadians are able to do that, they are going to be competitive. It does not matter how and where they will get those players, but the, the, what's important is how they will turn those players into what they're going to turn this player into and the way they're going to develop them. And look at the Tampa Bay Lightning. Safety. Yes, they drafted Steven Stamkos, Victor Henman high in, in the draft, but with without Nikita Kucherov and Braden Point, who are two late draft picks, they are not going to win any Stanley Cups. Look at Braden Point. He got drafted in the second round. And Nikita Kucherov, I think it's even further in the draft. Nikita Kucherov is a franchise player. And they drafted him in the second round, 58th overall. Those are two second round picks that helped the, the Tampa Bay Lightning win two Stanley Cups. So that just shows that, yes, it's important to get uh, some high draft picks. And even so, look at the Edmonton Oilers. They have McDavid and they're, they're not able to win Stanley Cup. So calm down. Even if the Canadians end up not getting Connor Bedard, it's not the end of the world. They are still going to be able to perform well in the future. So yeah, y'all need to calm down. It's been about Tropical Habs. Let me know what you guys want to think about this in the comments below. Do you agree with me? You might not. Uh, so yeah, it's been about Tropical Habs. Have a nice rest of your day and bye-bye. <laughs>